Good day and welcome back to True Footy. It's me, Bush, the fantasy guy. I'm just here to give you a bit of an update after the last couple of weeks as fantasy has played out since my last video. However, I think rather than just giving you a quick little update, I've got some exclusive behind the scenes footage that I've found that has occurred since the recording of my last video and the present. So I think this footage will sum up how my fantasy classic has gone the last two weeks since those highs I had a couple weeks ago. So as I was saying, exclusively off my round one performance in fantasy classic, based entirely off of this, but I am in fact the greatest fantasy player ever. The entire audience is a bunch of peasants and you should all bow to your king. What's this? Is that a reality check? <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! As you could tell from this behind the scenes footage that I've fallen off quite a bit in the Fantasy Classic. I've fallen from my rank 22 at the time of the last video all the way down to 5,400 and something. It's quite the steady decline. Another decline that I've had that I'm going to bring up as much for Jesse's benefit as my own is the fall that I've taken in the True Footy Fantasy League. I've fallen from first place at the time of the last video all the way to... 36, counted them myself. That's a bit of an inside joke that me and Jesse have, but I thought I'd slip it in there for a bit of a laugh for everyone's benefit and it was contextually relevant and whenever it's contextually relevant I'm busting a 36 out, don't you worry. In today's video I'm going to briefly sort of run through my classic team as it stand, stood at the end of round 3. I'm going to sort of talk about how it's progressed the last couple of weeks. Just sort of give a bit of a quick review of each line and sort of give a bit of a prioritisation of who I'd like to trade out how quickly. If that makes some sense. First off I'm looking at my defenders. Round 3 scores, I was quite happy to see Doherty bounce back after an iffy round 2. I knew he would. I knew that round 2 score was basically a worst case scenario for Doc. And that upside was coming and boy did it with a nice little 136. Hayden Young, he had me a little worried in that derby. His score was quite low most of the game. He ended up salvaging an 80 which I'll take from that but I still think there's a bit of upside there. If he'd played a bit worse following his game last week, he probably could have been close to the top of the chopping block. But the fact he bounced back with an 80 this week sort of puts a few heads in front of him to be chopped off before him. Nicky Dacos is going to Nicky Dacos. He's an absolute horse. He's going to sit there all year, I think, and be a pillar of my back line. Brad Hill has been a very pleasant surprise. He's been scoring pretty well, beating his break even every week, making me a bit of cash at a minimum. I'm not in a hurry to get rid of him, but I could see myself upgrading him into something a bit more solid in the back line if I'm sort of given the opportunity to do so in a few weeks, but there are some other trades I'd definitely prefer to prioritise. As for my cash cows, Darcy Wilmont, Ruben Jimby, they're both still making plenty of bread. They're both putting up respectable scores. I'm happy to roll with those two until an opportunity to upgrade them into something substantial shows its face. As for my midfield, my premium guys have held up pretty well. Jack McRae had a nice bounce back game after he had a bit of a slow one last week. Oh, it was hilarious seeing everyone shit themselves after round two going, Oh, you have to drop Jack McRae! You're screwed if you don't get rid of Jack McRae! I was just sitting there like, he's still a fucking premium midfielder. The guy's averaged magnificently the last five years off of one game just because Luke Beveridge was rolling the magnets around a bit, seeing everyone just shit their pants as much as they did over McRae. I just thought it was a bit obscene myself, but eh. One person who deserves a bit of a flaming is Chatty Warner. Since my last video, round one, he was outstanding. Rounds two and three, he has been dog shit. As someone who I believe takes pride in his fantasy score, I'm sure Chad Warner himself is quite disgusted with his recent efforts. And however, if it wasn't for the last minute LDU injury, my trade last week was getting Warner out and LDU in. Unfortunately, the last minute LDU curveball meant I couldn't do this. Otherwise, I think this would have been a nice little upgrade as LDU is going to be the man for the rest of the year. And as soon as I see he's get coming back, I'm making this trade, I think. Another couple of disappointing midfielders for me have been my mid-priced guys in James Warple and Finn Callahan. Both of these guys have now... Oh, Warple's actually been pretty good, to be fair to him. It's just this last week, his 57 was a bit of a nightmarish score. 
as I've alluded to in other videos, I think there's going to be a lot of mouths to feed in that Hawthorne midfield, and it's going to be one week John Newcomb has a big game, next week he has a shit one. One week Warple has a good game, next week he has a shit one. One week McKenzie, etc., etc. You know where I'm going with this. I think it's going to be a bit volatile with some of those guys, so Warple is someone else I'm probably interested in getting out of. At this sort of stage, I'm thinking a trade with him and Callahan, where I use both of them to go into a premium, like an LDU, someone like that, and then also pick up another promising cash cow that's going to be getting games into them a bit later in the year. Finally, Will Ashcroft, Cam McKenzie, those two have been doing a great job as my cash cows. They're probably going to sit there most of the year, if not all year. Again, similar to Ruben, Jimby and Wilmont, if I can see a good trade to upgrade them into something substantial, I'll take it. Other than that, I think I'd pass. As for my rocks, Jared Witts, both weeks he's been pretty good. This week an 80 bit low of in his previous highs, but as I've alluded to repeatedly with Witts, you expect him in that 80 to 100 a lot, so he's just performing the way you'd expect. As for my second rock, I did trade in Sean Darcy, and last week he wasn't great, but this week he boomed spectacularly with a nice little 128. And I think I'm hoping to sit and forget with this combination of rucks barring injury or some egregious display of form from either of them. Finally, looking at my classic forward line, you can see Rosie's finally had that big 110 plus sort of game. He's sort of been teasing it, sort of around the 90s, lower sort of score. You knew he had this in him. It's good to see him actually put it on the board. Tim Taranto's just been consistently brilliant. Happy to have him sit there all year. Errol Golden. Bit of a slower game for him compared to some of his other ones, but again, I think he's one that's going to be a little volatile, but in the forward position, you can live with his down weeks being a 70 or whatever. Sheasel's going to sheasel. That man's outstanding. I'll touch on him a little bit later when I talk about a trade I made in my fantasy draft league. And another manoeuvre I made at the last minute as a result of that LDU. Instead, I, my initial trade was getting Warner out LDU in, but once I heard the warning, uh, LDU news, sorry, I heard it with about five minutes to spare, so I rolled back that trade. Instead, I got out Constable, who got dropped, so I used this as an opportunity to get him out instead of waiting a week. And then I used it as an opportunity to upgrade Philip, who I thought was starting to get close to being around his break-even average. I used this to upgrade him into Rochelle, who was probably the best forward I could afford using that combination for an upgrade. Rochelle was solid with a 75. I think I'm going to sit on him for a few weeks. I think there is potential to sort of upgrade him into something a bit more premium and consistent, but until I see that opportunity, I'm happy to ride with Rochelle. And then finally, Luke Pedler has just been a steady, consistent little cash cow. I think he's probably got a few more weeks of profit in him before I really have to think about what I want to do with him. So I'm happy to sort of just have a rotation of him, Alwyn Davey, Noah Long, those sort of players as that forward six. But yeah, and overall priorities looking at this team... In terms of players I want to trade out, my number one priority at the moment is probably Chad Warner because his break evens become obscene after these last two weeks. So I sort of just want to cash out that block of value as best I can and upgrade that into something more solid. Hopefully LDU's back this week and I can just sort of make that trade rather than sort of having to evaluate a few more people and decide what value to move into with Warner. And then the other sort of trade I'd like to prioritise is a Warple, Finn Callahan sort of pair them up bring in a premium mid and get some change on top of that sort of thing. So those are sort of the trades I'm planning on prioritising with my current team. I have, however, been doing quite well in my fantasy draft league, which, as I've said, has been my main priority over the Classic. I did kind of get get the eyes for the glory after that round one performance in Classic, but to see my draft team still doing what I need it to do, I'm undefeated. The last two weeks I've had the highest score in the league, which is great. With my highest scoring team the past couple of weeks, it's been quite good to sort of see that my team has the upside to be at the top of the league. I sort of suspected it, but it's good to get the confirmation, I guess. A couple of major things I'd like to discuss in relation to my draft league before I end the video is going into round two, I pulled off quite a massive trade. Some would consider it quite the coup. I'll sort of set up the context for this trade a bit more first, though. Because I did have to make another trade first before I could make this big trade. And then this big trade almost got vetoed by the league because they felt it was a bit one-sided. I can see the argument, but due to the extenuating circumstances of the person I traded with, I think it was fair enough. And based on the fact he was the second highest scoring team this round behind my own, shows both teams got some value. Basically, I've 
been discussing with the Tom Stewart owner since the time of Tom Stewart's injury, sort of, he was sort of keen to offload him because he had a few other injuries as well. And then the following week, he copped the Jack Steele injury. So at this stage of the game, the person I was doing this big trade with, he had an injured Tom Stewart, an injured Josh Kelly still, now an injured Jack Steele, some several other injured players I can't recall off the top of my head, but his roster had been utterly decimated by injury. So he was quite eager to sort of move on some of those injured players for people who could perform for him now. We were sort of bouncing ideas back and forth. We kind of had a deal sort of set around where I was sending him Sheasel and a couple of other pieces in exchange for Stewart and Jack Steele because his forward line was lacking and he felt Sheasel was a good value add to his forward line. With the Jack Steele news and people expecting Stewart out to be a few more months, he sort of, a few more weeks, sorry, not a few more months for Stewart. He was sort of hoping to get some immediate contributors in. So I offered him a couple of my depth guys and Sheasel, and he, he was close. He was sort of talking to a couple of other people, trying to find another deal. I believe he had a deal sent around Zach Butters and Vlosten in exchange for those two cooking up as well. So he had a bit of a bidding war going. However, I was approached by another person in our league saying if I was interested in trading Noah Anderson for a two-for-one, getting a defender in as well as Jacob Hopper. So I went back to the Stuart Steele owner, said, are you interested in anyone on this person's team that I can sort of use to round this deal out because I'm in talks with him. I can make a deal to get a piece that interests you to consolidate our deal. He said he liked Hopper. So I went back to the Hopper owner and said, I'll do the Noah Anderson deal for Luke McDonald and... Jacob Hopper. I immediately then moved on Jacob Hopper along with Harry Sheasel and Adam Saad to the Tom Stewart owner for Tom Stewart and Jack Steele. Now on its merits, when everyone in this trade is healthy, I won by the length of Flemington straight. Like, I got the two best players in the trade. I basically gave up one person who'd started for me that week in my team. The rest of it was bench players. So from that perspective, I can understand why there are a few people in the league who are a bit like, what the fuck, this trade's a bit one-sided, it's a bit unfair to the rest of us. But in saying that, the fact that the other owner who I was dealing with had that many injuries, he just needed to get some talent in his team. He, like me, was a big Sheasel fan, so we probably, between the two of us, valued Sheasel a bit higher than the league average sort of valued him. So I think that was a contributing factor as well. However, I'd like to know what the audience thinks. If you guys were in our league and this trade had occurred a week or so ago where one person was getting Tom Stewart and Jack Steele in exchange for Sheasel, Saad and Jacob Hopper, who do you think would win that trade considering the injury context? The fact Stewart came back this week was a bonus, not that I played him, but I was ready to get subbed so I just copped the McDonald 87, but Stewart's back as good as ever so that's a tick in my box I guess. Basically, this trade, I think, really set me up for the rest of the season, even though my midfield is, compared to the rest of the league, probably a bit atrocious. But I think once I get Jack Steele back in my lineup between him and Brad Crouch, those two can elevate the average of my weaker two midfielders enough to the point where I can cover this up and rely on my defense, which I'm feeling pretty confident in saying I have the best back line in our league now between Sam Doherty, Tom Stewart, and then emergency in or playing whoever's had a better game out of Redmond and Luke McDonald. Those two as my roller coaster third is about as good an option as you're going to get. And then Stewart and Doherty are just two of the top five defenders. So having that's hard to top. My ruck still wits. I think he's just going to be competitive in that position week to week. Hold his own to a point where I'm not getting burnt out of the water by a ruck disparity. And then my forward line is still great, even though Isaac Heaney is worrying me a little. He's had the terrible game this week, 28. He's averaging only 57. He's only had the one game averaging numbers where I'd be happy having him play. But I've been lucky that Jez Cameron's had a hot start, so I've sort of been able to balance that out a little. And now I'm in a position where I can sort of play the emergency trick between Heaney, Jez Cameron, Cam Zerha, a couple of other dudes sort of get in the best two of those three in any given week as best as I can play it with the emergency and everything and as for Dylan Moore he's been outstanding I probably undersold probably oversold him the first video undersold him the next video and I'm sort of probably gonna oversell him again this video he's nearly averaging 110 he's played great he's been despite being more of a forward and not getting those opportunities to really accumulate possessions he still finds a way to get plenty of touches get a few goals in land a few tackles and marks just all those things you need to boost a respectable fantasy score out of him. 
so I'm ecstatic to have him as my forward one. But yeah, I think this is going to be a bit of a shorter video today. I've just sort of, I wouldn't say I've made it for the sake of making it, but I felt was enough's gone on where I could sort of provide a bit of a summary. I think I'm going to try and aim and do a bit of a bi-weekly video. Hopefully I can sort of expand on this sort of premise a bit more, but I just wanted to get something out there and create the continuity, I guess. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, especially comment your opinions on that draft trade I mentioned. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Shave your balls with Manscaped using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Make yourself fit using Drewzy's Athlete Academy. Link in the bio. If I was wearing the Yeah Nah footy shirt right now, I'd plug them, but they're great shirts. I'd recommend checking them out on Instagram. Have a good one.